During the last lesson, we learned how to insert various objects in our model. Now we want to see them, so let's go back to our model and see how to change the viewing style in 3D view. We have different viewing styles, such as the wireframe or shaded with or without texture, hidden lines, shaded with lines or shaded with outline and the relating texture. Remaining in this view, we can also see another important feature for assign materials to objects directly in the 3D view. Let's open this menu here and choose the materials option. On the right panel, we have the materials category in the general beam object library. We can choose different types of materials. We have water, asphalt, soil, roofing tiles, plasters, different wood effects, both opaque and polished, metal, walls with different type of bricks, porcelain, plastics, stones, marble. In fact, the material section contains a wide range of materials for all the kinds of needs. For example, let's choose a dotted plaster for our exterior surface finish. When a material has a globe icon to one side, this means that some features need to be downloaded from the internet. In order to enhance the visual effect in the real-time rendering environment, these materials are created with specific texture maps to define surface characteristics, like rawness, smoothness, and though it reflects light when viewed in real-time beam. Let's select one, for example this material here, and to apply it, simply select and click. At this point, as you can see, the software will start to download the material texture map from the internet. This extra info is downloaded only upon the first request, and therefore not when using the same material again. Allow me to select and apply other materials types to the various other floor in this project. Again, Alt F2 to rearrange the windows. Now let's have a look at some other function for managing multi-story building. When dealing with multiple floor, we definitely need to define extra levels. The specific dialogues allow us to define and manage the levels in our building. When we access the section, we get a quick idea of the distribution and elevation according to the diagram positioned to the right. We have a ground floor level and another one for our external arrangement, the foundation level for inserting those elements between the foundation and the building's lower floor, hold the levels relating to the building and its level configuration. Here we can insert a new level and then give it a name, for example the basement or maybe another level above the ground floor that we will call first floor. For each level you can define a height. So we will have the basement that will be for example 3 meters, the ground floor 3.2 meters, and the first floor 3.1. Each level will have its own elevation value and they are all updated according to the elevation value that we define through the building's development in elevation. We have the ground floor at 0.1, while all other are automatically updated. At the end of the level editing phase, simply click OK and notice how the diagram on the right shows our level setting dynamically. Next, we will be seeing how to use the copy function from the vertical toolbox here on the right of the program interface. This is an interesting feature because it allows us to copy all or select entities from one level to another level. At this point, I can copy the entities present on the level B or copy only certain type of entities to the ground floor. For example, I need to copy the building envelope, the doors, I don't want to copy the windows, but I want to keep the stairs and the railings. I will use the horizontal envelopes and also the room entity definitions too. Once this section is defined, 
I will simply click on the copy button and see that the slab and the window are not copied here. Actually, we will not need the railings, so I will select and delete them. We also want to delete this railing and this slab that we don't need, because we will be modeling a different external arrangement. Let's see now how to draw the roof of this building. From the object menu select the roof object. We can draw the perimeter or use the auto generate tool using the magic wand that already recognizes the perimeter of the entire building. And then simply click edit roof to insert and model the individual roof slab. As you can see here, the roof footprint was defined in relation to the building's perimeter, but we need a slight overangle around in order to create a gutter with a 1.2 meter width. Once this is done, we then need to insert the single slab, joining them up accordingly. But we can also use this auto pitch function that quickly generates an IP the roof solution. All we need to do is assign an inclination and confirm to see our roof created in a click. We can still continue to model our roof entity, adding other characteristics such as openings, cornices and draw a space inside the perimeter of the roof. We can also insert our eaves. It is sufficient to make a first click and with a second click define the eaves. With this object we can choose a different thickness than a wall with a different material layer. Selecting our leaf, we can choose a different material layer from the rest of the slopes, choose a pitch that follows the slope, or maybe set this as horizontal. By confirming you can see that the roof is now completed. If we check the 3D model, we can see that the roof is fully represented and completed with a stylish roof tile texture. If we hide the roof structure, we can see that the building envelopes are all cut horizontally at different height. To avoid this alignment error, we can use a function that allows us to connect the upper level building envelopes to the roof sub level. Let's see how by selecting the entire floor level. We will filter only the building envelopes and in the property toolbox in the Eyes Reference System, in the sublevel field, we can choose everything. In this way, all the enclosures are aligned to the roof structure. How about completing the roof with a drainage system and insert a gutter? We will proceed very easily by simply tracing an extruded profile using the solid extrusion object available in the architectural object menu. We will use the panel to the right to select our profile, let's say this is the type that we need, then confirm and trace it around the roof perimeter from this point to this point and so on. As we trace the gutter object, we can close it with the right mouse button click and choose the close option. As already seen with other entities, using the F5 and F6 function keys, we can change the alignment axis to align the gutter to the roof structure at this intersection point. The drainage system wouldn't be complete without a downspot, and the edificius has the specific object too and can be inserted in 3D view directly. Always within our menu, we can select the downspot object and click to insert, for example, along this wall. With the next click, we define the rotation. And to modify it, select it by clicking on this axis here on the tip. We modify the height of the object and we can align it with magnetism. Selecting the arrow, 
we will modify the height of the only inclined section. By clicking on this other side, we also modify the length of the first section. We can also change the distance from the wall by clicking on the horizontal section. Another object related to a roof configuration is the dormer opening. Here so to insert it and model it in the specific editor. Selected the object from the architectural menu, we simply click on the roof entity to set it in position. Then notice this new editor where we can concentrate more attention to selecting the type of model. A first click inserts the dormer ridge point and a second click to define its base. Being another parametric object, we can modify its dimension by typing in measurements manually or by clicking this button. The Dormer Object option are shown here on the right where we can define the slab and the wall material layers, show or hide the specific elements, edit other features and material sections. By clicking Finish, our Dormer will now be inserted, allowing us to proceed with other modeling details, such as the windows.